welcome to EC Electronics. This is a video on the preparation for Satish Dhawan Space Center recruitment for the post of technical assistant. Okay, so the last date for application for the post is December 30. And uh, I just wanted to inform you that if you have not applied for this post, please to apply as soon as possible. Don't wait till December 30. The correct option for A, B and C getting x equal to 1 in the circuit given below. So this is a digital uh, electronics question from the logic gates. Okay, so there are uh, three inputs and there is an output called X. And X is uh, given as AB into BC, BC, the whole bar. So, uh, this is actually a very basic question. If you know how to simplify the logic simplification or Boolean simplification, you can answer this question. Okay, so my request is that if you are practicing for uh, the exam preparation of uh, Satish Dhawan Space Center for the post of technical assistant, you cannot, uh, you can expect the questions from uh, the core subjects of electronics or any of the stream which you are preparing for, you can expect the, uh, the questions from the core uh, subjects, which cannot be very tough, which cannot be very easy, but will be having a moderate level. But anyway, they'll be connected to the core subjects. And uh, the problems also, if they are asking, they won't be very tough uh, because uh, the post is for the technical assistant. Okay, so uh, if, you're, uh, if you are somebody who is preparing for the examination, you don't have to concentrate more on the, uh, the aptitude or the uh, English or general awareness. Just concentrate mainly on your subject and then give importance to the other uh, reasoning, aptitude and everything. Okay, because 90% of the questions will be from your uh, subject only. Only 10% uh, or less will be from the other area. Okay, so uh, that's all uh, I want to say if you are preparing for the examination okay so this question in order to answer this you don't need to really look into the circuit you just have to look to the uh, boolean expression of your output the output x is given as x is equal to a b into b c whole bar right so if you know d morgan's theorem you can expand this b c the whole bar as what is a b whole bar according to d morgan's theorem it is a bar plus b bar right so here it is b and c so b bar plus c bar so just open this bracket and multiply this a b term to inside the bracket so you will get a b b bar plus a b and c bar right so this b into b bar is equal to zero so this term will get cancelled and the left out term is a b into c bar now this is the combination you need to get a one Right. So, how to make this combination is 1. If you having, uh, if this is a product term. So, if you have a 1, 1 and then a 1 again, if you take the product, only then you will get a 1. Right. So, it should be 1, 1 and here it is a C bar. So, it is a 0 because 0 bar is only 1. Okay. So, this is the, this is the combination you need to get. That is A, B and C should be in the combination 1, 1 and 0. Okay, so this is a very simple thing. Okay, so the correct answer for this question is option B, which is A equal to B equal to 1 and C equal to 0. So the correct answer is option B. Okay, so if you see such a circuit, don't go for thinking about these connections and all. Just look into the output expression. The output expression is only thing which matters um, for selecting the combination of inputs so that you should get a 1. So simplify that expression and try to uh, try to relate it with the options given and find out which combination will give you what. Okay, so the correct answer for this question is option B. The next question is in number system 111 1, 1 to the base x equal to 7 to the base 10. Then x is dash. This is a very basic question. If you know the very basics of digital electronic number systems, that is binary number system, decimal number system, octa and hexadecimal. Basically, these are the number systems. If you know the basics, you can answer this question. So, the representation of the number 7 in binary is 1, 1, 1. So, binary is a base 2, right? So, this is actually your value or your x value is 2. Anyway, let us try to convert this 1, 1, 1 in binary to decimal how to convert it i have uh, already explained uh, it in detail in my earlier video that how to simply convert the numbers from binary to decimal and decimal to binary like this 
So uh, just we have three ones here. Okay, I'll write it like this. Okay, there are three ones, and uh, these numbers are I'm taking it as to the base of uh, two. That is a binary number system. And if you want to convert this number to decimal, then uh, write a one below the first number, then into two, then again this number into two, you will get four. So again into two means eight, likewise. But since uh, here there is only three numbers, you have to write only till four. That is as a multiples of two, you have to write in the bottom of the numbers. Okay, then uh, if any of the numbers above, that is uh, here all are, all are ones. But in case if any numbers are, in, uh, are having value zero, then strike off those numbers, then add the remainder or remain, rem remaining numbers. So here all the numbers are 1. So add all these numbers. That is 4 plus 2 plus 1. So that is equal to 7 in binary. Okay. So this is how you can simply convert a number in uh, binary format to decimal format. But anyway, this is a very simple question. By looking at the question itself, you can find it out that this uh, 7 to the base 10 is actually triple 1 to the base 2. That is in binary number system, the number is represented as 1, 1 and 1. That is 1, 1, 1. Okay, so the correct answer is option B is your correct answer. Okay, let us see what is the next question. In a p-type silicon sample, the whole concentration is 2.25 into 10 raised to 15 uh, per centimeter cube. If the intrinsic carrier concentration is 1.5 into 10 raised to 10 per centimeter square, then the electrode concentration is dash. A, 0. B, 10 raised to 10 per centimeter cube. D, 10 raised to 5 per centimeter cube. And D, 1.5 into 10 raised to 25 per centimeter cube. Okay, so how to find the electron concentration? The equation for electron concentration is N. That is, I am going to call it as electron concentration as N. Then, uh, the electron concentration is given by Ni square by Na. Whereas, Ni is the intrinsic carrier concentration and Na is the whole concentration or the doping concentration. Okay, so uh, I am going to uh, find the value of uh, this N because both the uh, terms that is Ni and Na is given in the in the question, right? The whole concentration is given as 2.25 into 10 raised to 15. Here, this is a p-type uh, silicon semiconductor. So, uh, this whole concentration indicates the doping concentration Na. And also the intrinsic carrier concentration is directly given. Okay, just uh, uh, so just substitute the values and find the result. So, the intrinsic carrier concentration is 1.5 into 10 raised to 10 the whole square by, okay, 2.25 into 10 raised to 15. So, 1.5 the whole square is 2.5, 2.25. So, 2.25 into 10 square is, that is 10 raised to 10, the whole square is 10 raised to 20. So, this and this will get cancelled. Here it is a 10 raised to 20 on the numerator and the denominator there is a 10 raised to 15. So, if you cancel it, you will get a 10 raised to 5. Okay, so the carrier uh, electron concentration is 10 raised to 5 per centimeter cube is your answer. Okay, so this is a very direct question. You just need to know the equation to find the electron concentration. Okay, so the correct answer is option, uh, sorry, this is C. Okay, the option C is the correct answer. That is 10 raised to 5 per centimeter cube is your correct answer. Next question is, the device that does not have the gate terminal is dash. So, uh, some of the uh, electronic devices are given and we have to find out which of these does not have a gate terminal. Okay, so first one is triac. So, what is a triac? Triac is having a anode and a cathode and also followed by a gate terminal. So, like this, the, the triac will look like. So, this is having an anode and a cathode and a gate terminal. So, this triac is having a gate terminal. So, that is not your correct answer. Okay. Next one is FET. So, FET is field effect transistor. So, this uh, FET, uh, the very basic FET will be having a drain. 
source and a gate. Okay, so this FET is also having a gate terminal. Now, the third option or the option C is SCR or silicon control rectifier or it is also called thyristor. So, this uh, device is having an anode, a cathode and also a gate. Anode, cathode and a gate terminal. So, this is a very basic symbol of a SCR or silicon control rectifier. Okay, so from this options from the three options it is very clear that the last option or the option d will be your correct answer okay option d is diac so this diac is having only two terminals that is anode and cathode so this is the uh, symbol of a diac which is not having any gate terminals and the correct answer for your question is option d which is diac okay so these are very basic electronic components which you have probably studied in your uh, subject classes. Okay, anyway the correct answer for this question is option D which is diac. The next question is an optical fiber has core refractive index of N1 and cladding refractive index of N2. The numerical aperture is dash. Option A root of N1 square minus N2 square. B, root of n2 square minus n1 square, option C, n2 by n1 and option D, sine inverse of n2 by n1. Now, what is the very basic thing about a uh, optical fiber? So, this optical fiber is a device which is used for communication and it is using the principle of total internal reflection. Okay, I am just telling you very basic things, few of the basic things I am telling. So, this... Um, optical fiber is having an inner core let this be the core and covering this core there is a cladding and covering the cladding there is a buffer so this is a very basic structure of an optical fiber now the light will pass through this this core region and will undergo total internal reflection without any loss and hence the light can be transmitted very faster and without any loss. So that is a very basic advantage of a optical fiber. Okay, so this uh, core is having a very high refractive index. Okay, the core material is having a very high refractive index and then the cladding, cladding's uh, job is to prevent the, uh, the dispersion or the coming out of light from the core region. That is to confine the light within the core region. That is the job of the cladding. And the cladding is having a refractive index comparatively less as that of the core region. And then the buffer. Buffer is actually acting as a protective cover which will protect your optical fiber. So that is uh, basic things you should know. Now in the question they have asked about the numerical aperture. Right. What is actually numerical aperture? I have told that the principle of operation of an optical fiber is total internal reflection and when the light is incidenting at a particular angle only then the uh, total internal reflection is happening after uh, a particular angle that is if the angle is exceeding the particular uh, at a particular angle then total internal reflection is not possible that angle's sine value is a numerical aperture i'll explain it once again that is numerical aperture is equal to sine Alpha, I am taking uh, the angle as alpha, where alpha is the maximum angle possible to have total internal reflection. After this alpha, that is if the angle is exceeding the alpha, total internal reflection is not possible. Such an angle is called alpha and its sine value is called the numerical aperture. Okay, I will tell it again, that is numerical aperture is the sine of the maximum angle possible to have total internal reflection okay and in terms of the refractive indices of the two regions which are core and cladding you can write this numerical aperture as root of n core square minus n cladding square whereas n core is the refractive index of your core region and n cladding is a refractive index you are cladding region here in this question they have given the refractive index of the core as n1 and the refractive index of the cladding as N2. So simply numerical aperture is equal to root of N1 square minus N2 square. 
So this is a very basic theory question. You don't uh, need to do any problems to answer this question. Just you should know about the theory. So that's what I'm telling. If you're preparing for the technical assistant examination, you should be thorough with the basic things of your core subjects. In a rectangular wave guide, dominant mode is dash. This is also a theory question. Now, what is a dominant mode? A dominant mode is a mode of a wave guide with minimum cutoff frequency and also the mode with a minimum distortion and also the mode which support more than one type of propagation. So that is the basics, uh, basics about a dominant mode. And for a rectangular waveguide, we know that there are rectangular waveguides and circular waveguides. So, uh, in a rectangular waveguides, uh, the dominant mode is TE10 and for circular waveguides, it is TE11. Okay, so this mode is having, for a rectangular waveguide, this TE10 mode is having minimum cutoff frequency and minimum distortion. Okay, so the correct answer for this question is, Option A, which is TE10, is the dominant mode for a rectangular waveguide. And if the question was for circular waveguide, it is TE11. Okay. Next, which of the following is a universal logic circuit? So, this is a little bit confusing question. Okay. Let us see the uh, options given. Option A, and or. Option B, encoder. Option C, multiplexer. Option D, NAND gate. Okay, so what is the universal logic circuit? Okay, so the correct answer for this question is a MUX or a multiplexer. Multiplexer is called a universal logic circuit because you can implement all your gates and uh, mostly all of your logic circuits uh, with the help of a multiplexer. So it is called a universal logic circuit. So some people will get confused with the universal logic gates because there are some universal logic gates also, right? That are NAND gate and NOR gate. Because in the options, they have also given the NAND gate. So don't get confused with this NAND gate because if the question was for universal logic gate, then it is NAND gate. Or if it was NOR gate, then the correct answer is NOR gate. But here they have asking, they have asked the universal logic circuit. Because you, uh, if you have uh, done your logic uh, circuit problems, you know that with the help of a MUX, you can realize all your logic gates, right? So, with the help of this MUX, you can re realize all your logic gates and hence it is called a universal logic circuit. Okay, so the correct answer for this question is option C, which is multiplexer. Okay, so these are the questions which I have included in this video. This uh, video is a little bit simple uh, video. Because this is only the starting uh, video for the Satish Tavan Space Center preparation. Okay, I have included the questions from the 2016 uh, examination for technical assistant. And in the question paper also, you can see only very basic, basic questions. You cannot uh, find really tougher questions. Okay, we will be seeing in the next video with a little bit difficult questions of Satish Tavan Space Center technical assistant preparation. Okay, so if this video was useful for your preparation, please do uh, like this video and share this video with all your friends. And if you want more videos for your preparation, please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.